Hey guys, Quinn Hennick here, doctor of physical therapy, clinical athlete provider of Juggernaut Training Systems. I want to talk a little bit about a common modality known as the voodoo flossing or the compression bands that uh, athletes will use to increase range of motion or change perception of their movement. There was actually a a recent research article that came out and I want to give a shout out to the authors for asking these questions because it's very important that we have evidence to back up the things that we prescribe or use with our athletes. And the title of this paper, which I'll link in the comment above or the post above, is called The Effects of Tissue Flossing on Ankle Range of Motion and Jump Performance. The authors there were Matthew Driller and Ryan Overmare. And so they took 52 athletes, they wrapped one of uh, the athlete's ankles with the compression bands, the other ankle got nothing, it was the control, and then they had the ankle pump, or they had the athlete pump their ankle in plantar flexion and dorsiflexion to max, max range for two minutes. Take the band off and they tested a few things. So they tested before and after the treatment a, a dorsiflexion in the lunge position or the half kneeling position, dorsiflexion and plantar flexion in the supine position using a goniometer, single leg jump height and single leg jump velocity. And what they found was a statistically significant difference for the ankle that got the compression bands. They, uh, they saw more range of motion in the lunge and the supine testing. They saw higher jump, single leg jump heights, and they saw faster uh, single leg jump rates, so faster velocity up. However, when you actually look at the data, when you look at the tables, the, the statistics in the study, the effect sizes were extremely small for all of those variables. And in fact, in some cases, the standard deviation was actually greater than the effect size itself. And so the statistics actually become very, very uh, unimpressive, I guess, and almost negligible when you get right down to it. And they talk about the proposed mechanisms of why these things work, because it's always important to know why uh, we're doing something. They, they reference something called a fascial shearing as one hypothesis as to why uh, these changes might occur. However, fascial shearing was cited in the article by the use of just one popular book that many of you have probably heard of that contains itself at uh, exactly zero scientific references. So they had, fascial shearing was the idea, but they had no evidence to back up this uh, this this term or, or this claim. So no, no substantiation there whatsoever. And I would argue as to why fascial shearing would, would help somebody jump higher, I would think that shearing off their connective tissue would actually be of detriment to high performance. For a range of motion, you would think that shearing your connective tissue would have more permanent effects. But what we see in clinic and anecdotally is that these changes caused by, uh, you know, these compression bands are usually short term. So fascial shearing and what we've seen with, with other evidence regarding the amount of force that's required to actually shear our tissues, it's very unlikely that uh, fascial shearing is a substantiated, uh, validated claim as to the mechanisms uh, uh, of why we see things like compression bands change range of motion. For jump height, they used uh, similar m proposed mechanisms that we see in blood flow restriction, like changes in growth hormone or certain neurotransmitters that increase performance, but they didn't test for any of that. So that's that's complete conjecture. The protocols were completely different for blood flow restriction as, as opposed to this study. So uh, until they, they actually measure those things, we gotta throw that by the wayside. Um, taking these things into consideration, it's very important that to consider the fact that the participants were not blinded to the treatment that they got. They knew which leg got the compression, they knew which leg did not. The assessors were also not blinded. They knew which leg the athlete got the compression on and which leg they didn't. This can confound the data. It can, conf it can bias the assessors to score in a certain way. It can produce non-specific, AKA placebo effects to the participant, knowing they got the compression on one side, can uh, we can't discount what that can do for these for these already small changes. And so it's very very important. The reason this is important is because we still do not know why these things work. After reading the article, I have the same questions um, and no more answers as to as to why these things work. They create maybe short term changes, but the the differences are almost negligible when you get down to the statistics. And so it's very important that we don't. Uh, create false narratives to our athletes because they're going to ask, you know, why am I doing this? What does this do? And if we say, well, 
we really don't know. Uh, it can provide some type of, of short-term change potentially. You know, maybe a lot of it is is a placebo effect. Uh, that would be an honest narrative and and you know summation of of the current evidence. But if you say things like, ah, oh, well, it's going to break up your scar tissue and really release those adhesions, and so your joints can can slide and glide a little bit better. That's kind of you know we're spreading false narratives there, and we're creating potentially creating dependence on a modality that. Uh, it hasn't yet to be shown to be efficacious. You know, we still don't know what it does. And the conclusions, based on all of this, the conclusions that the the athletes draw are what confuse me the most. Um, I'll just kind of read a, a short excerpt here. Our results would suggest that including band flossing on the ankle joint before taking part in any sports that require jumping actions may not only improve performance, but may also provide a novel strategy for injury prevention through increasing ankle range of motion. This is where the term jumping to conclusions comes from. I'm, I'm confused, somewhat baffled, based on the extremely small effect size that the authors show. The statistics are, are clear as day. They're right there in front of you. To say that this is this is somehow now a strategy for for injury prevention uh, may improve performance. Uh, having a significant the result, results of this study may have a significant impact on in the sports setting. I, I'm simply not seeing that. Perhaps it does set up this set the stage for more research, different protocols, different movements, different loading strategies. Absolutely, 100%. Let's keep studying these things because they're so common. But to jump to those conclusions, uh, based on those statistics, we have to be careful about that. And that's exactly why uh, we should read the full article. Always read the full article. Look at the statistics because sometimes the conclusions that the authors draw don't necessarily line up. This is something that we discuss. This very paper, this very topic is something that we discuss in the Clinical Athlete Forum. Hopefully you guys got something out of this. Thanks.